सहनावतु सहनाओ भुनक्तु सहवीर्यम करवा वही तेजस्वी नावधी तमस्तु मावित विशाबही ई ओम शांति 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 ही May the Lord protect us. May the Lord be pleased with us. May we work together with strength. May we be filled with divine energy. May there be no dislike among us. Peace be unto us and unto our beings. Good morning and welcome to this special lecture. Uh, we are extremely pleased on behalf of the temple to welcome uh, Mataji Divya Prananda to our temple. Uh, many of us have been uh, watching her uh, lectures on YouTube and have been uh, ardently following her uh, ideas and thoughts. Uh, Mataji is uh, associated with the Ramakrishna mission, especially the uh, uh, branches in uh, New Delhi. And she is also the editor of uh, the journal, English language journal Samvit, and has served as also uh, principal of the Nivedita Vidya Mandir, and uh, has uh, has a, a tremendous uh, uh, range of topics that she talks on Vedanta and our uh, Hindu scriptures. And we are very fortunate uh, to have Mataji here with us today for two lectures. One is uh, to start right now on the Gayatri Mantra and then uh, a second lecture this afternoon at 2 p.m. about the uh, positive attitude in the face of difficulties. With that brief introduction, I invite Mataji to come to the stage and begin her lecture. <laughs> thirst in the people here. So it is something very heartening to know because you know this is the general course of human evolution. Once our survival needs are met, naturally the mind hungers for something higher and you start pursuing some spiritual path and naturally you frequent places where there are spiritual vibrations you associate with people who have those inclinations. You study the scriptures. You come to satsang. Because we like to do it. We can't do without that. So, um, welcome to this gathering, to one and all. And uh, the topic given to me today is uh, a guided meditation and Gayatri Mantra. So, we will first do the guided meditation. It will be a very good preparation for our understanding of what the Gayatri stands for, what it is. We will discuss everything about Gayatri Mantra. So, um, may I please request you to sit straight. Yes, the back and the neck especially should be straight. Sit as still as possible. Close your eyes. Just quieten the system. Mm -hmm. 
watch your breathing. When you watch your breath, you will see it will slow down, it will calm down. Just watch your breath. For the next five minutes, don't allow anything to distract you. These are the two most important prerequisites for meditation. Sitting straight, doesn't matter if you are not sitting cross-legged, but the back and the neck should be straight. And you must breathe very regularly, very calmly. Now, when you have sufficiently stilled yourself, I will introduce the meditation. Imagine a point of light in your heart. Imagine it strongly, a light, a divine spark flashing in your heart. This is the light of awareness, the light of the Atman, which you are. It is the real I shining within you. The I, 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 I sense within us. It is to do with the Atma or the Atman. This is the light of the Atman that we will meditate upon. It is the light of awareness. It is the light of pure consciousness. It is the source of your perceptions and sensations and thought. It is the power behind your personality. It is your strength. It is the source of awareness and bliss. It is your very existence. You are this divine spark. Radiating light on all sides. This light has a name. It is called Om. We will repeat Om five times just to help us imagine this light very vividly in our heart. Om. Thank mm -hmm. you.
boom going on within your heart. Just hear the reverberation. Now imagine this point of light shining in your heart. Expand, expand evenly on all sides. And merge in the infinite effulgence of God or Brahman. the cosmic consciousness, you are one with it. Full consciousness, existence itself, bliss itself, you have become one with infinite being. Feel this to be your real identity, your unchanging identity. You are pure being, pure existence and consciousness. Everything shines through you because everything shines in your consciousness. You are the very source of life and being, existence. In your real nature, you are the Supreme One. Brahman Himself, Brahman Himself. That is why it is said you are of the nature of Sat, Chit, Ananda, Swarup. You are Parabrahman. So with this sense of ourselves, we will slowly open our eyes Feel the peace within you, 
You are the source of all power and strength. It's right within you. All energy is within you. Your consciousness is the source of all your perceptions and meditations. Feel this sense of identity. That is why this meditation. This is so important because when you practice something like this every day, what happens? Our usual sense of ourselves changes. How do we usually think of ourselves? Well, we are a little dissatisfied with how we perceive ourselves, isn't it? The same old miserable self struggling and frustrated and no, no. There is an aspect of ourselves, a dimension of our being which is always in touch with the divine. You just have to discover it. That's the beauty of Vedanta. It doesn't say you have to get it from outside. You have to do something and get it. It's already there. You must get in touch with it. Because you are the self. Are you outside yourself? Any point of time? No. Even when I am my strong ego, I am not outside the self. I just got identified with something else. That's all. So meditation like this will help you reconnect with your true being. See, that is the purpose of sadhana spiritual practice. In vibrant places like these, this is a temple and of Lord Ganesh. He is called Omkara Swarup. His real nature is that Om which we meditated upon. He is another embodiment of Parabrahman. One who powerfully expresses that reality. That's why he is a God. And he is the giver of all wounds. Yes, if you touch the reality within you, you will get whatever you want. You will have a body and mind which can help you achieve anything you want. So that's why he is the remover of obstacles. Because he is in touch. The complete reality is getting expressed through his body. Is he has become the all-powerful being. So you see, the Sagun and Nirgun aspects of life are always connected. Isn't it? This is the beauty of Hinduism. We don't uh, seriously quarrel about uh, whether God is with form or formless. We may have doubts initially, but it's beautifully reconciled. Isn't it? In Hinduism, that very same Parabrahman, the Supreme Godhead, whatever you call it, the reality of God is powerfully expressed in deities. That's why they are gods. And so we have temples where we are supposed to catch that original expression, that vibration. So we are in a very powerful ambience just now. And how exactly do we catch this? There are methods and techniques. Gayatri is the most powerful technique to do it. <laughs> so when I was given this topic, I was really amazed uh, because it's, it's very good to see so much interest in the Gayatri mantra, it's chanting. It's very good to know that you are so interested because let me tell you the fact about Gayatri. This Gayatri Mantra, uh, you may be knowing I was working uh, and I work with IIT Delhi. I give courses there. So, once we had a big course on, on this Vedanta and science of happiness and all that. But towards the end of the course, all the students there, they requested me to uh, teach them the Gayatri Mantra and give the meaning and help them practice it. So it came from them. 
And then I asked them, why, why do you want to know this? Because they said, uh, Mataji, we want a practical method to realize what we have learned in the course. See how they caught it? You require a method. Reality is always there as it is. But I am not in touch with it. No, that's my problem. So I require a method. Gayatri is the direct method, the most powerful method. Because the very meaning of Gayatri is, you know, Gayantam Trayate Iti Gayatri. You chant it and it liberates your mind. Gayantam Trayate. It will liberate your mind. To what an extent, you know, again I let me tell you from the research, NRCV research on Gayatri Mantra. They did a lot of research over a period of time and uh, all the participants who um, actually were made to chant Gayatri for extended periods of time, you know the very neurobiology of the brain changed. The fMRI scans of those brains showed very clear, very high level gamma radiation activity with distributed phase symmetry. It means a very, very calm, stable state of mind with deep awareness generated within. Just the chanting of the mantra. <coughs> so all these amazing results have come out in today's research because words have power. These syllables, these mantras, don't think somebody just made it up. Every mantra, the very meaning of mantra means Mananath Trayate Ete, which means if you think about it, it will bring you into a state of liberation. If you just think about it. You think about, let's say, Idli. Idli is not going to materialize before you. But you think of a mantra and whatever the mantra signifies will materialize in your life. How? What's the science behind this? See, this is what we will dwell upon. Why do mantras have power? Why do they become the means to spiritual elevation, spiritual transformation? Because these are not ordinary words. Do you know how a mantra is created? It is not created. It is discovered. Just like any truth of the scientific world, you don't sit and invent it. It is discovered. It was already there. Anybody invented gravity? We discovered gravity, isn't it? So also, what is already, already there, when your mind reaches a certain pitch, a certain elevation, you discover the truth about that. So are these mantras discovered. The Gayatri was discovered by the Rishi Vishwamitra and given to us. And it's the most powerful mantra for the awakening of higher intelligence which is very much required for spiritual evolution. Otherwise, you know, we would be so dumb, we won't even know why we should have spiritual evolution. Aren't there people like that? So many people around you, you can see, not interested in the spiritual life. Very happy with, uh, you know, survival needs. So development and enhancement of life means extension of the survival needs. That's all. The intelligence is limited to that. Gayatri will remove us out of this stupidity and help us understand the highest intelligence is that which uncovers your true nature, which uncovers the glory of your soul, which gives you immense strength from within, which gives you a luminous intelligence, which gives you dhi, which means that buddhi which takes you to God. Gayatri is a prayer for dhi the highest intelligence, the supreme intelligence that brings you the knowledge of Brahman, the knowledge of God. So you see the Gayatri is most powerful. It's a first of all it's a mantra, it's no ordinary syllables put together. It is the discovery of way to the ultimate knowledge. And secondly, Gayatri has been used over the centuries by so many people. If you have visited uh, uh, Pune, 
Maharashtra, you will see thousands of people do Gayatri Purasharan even today. Purasharan means over a period of a fortnight you do the Gayatri in uh, very specific numbers, uh, number of times you keep doing it. Uh, so when the uh, when it's the full moon you start and then the, uh, when it's the new moon it comes to a particular number. So when you do this Gayatri Purasharan again and again your very face will change because your brain has changed and finally your genes will change. You will look different, you will see things differently because you have awakened from within. So Gayatri is not a small thing, I can tell you this. That is why during the Hindu Upanayan ceremony, that eight years of age, Gayatri is given. It used to be given. In, in India, even now it's given. Um, why is that done? Is it just a ritual? No, no, no. The higher intelligence should awaken in that child. So he knows the entire scope of human life and evolution. So that he awakens to the deeper dimensions of his being. That is why the Gayatri. It, it used to be given during the Upanayan, eight years of age. When the child is eight, it is whispered into his ear by the guru, by the preceptor. <coughs> then he learns to chant it. So every day a little Gayatri goes into the system. Finally, one day you will see his very face and mind will change. Because this mantra is actually a prayer. It's a mantra come prayer for the awakening of higher intelligence, dhi, buddhi. That dhi is a special word. It doesn't, just doesn't mean buddhi. It means that spiritual intelligence which gives you the highest intuitions of life. So it's a prayer for that. Dhiyo yona prajodayat. Isn't it? Now this mantra occurs in both the Rig Veda and Yajur Veda, the Gayatri. It's a Vedic mantra and there's a big story connected with it. So let me go into the story first and then I'll come to the meaning of the mantra and how it is chanted. This story is very significant. It will teach you so much about human evolution and it uh, applies to every human life. This is the story of Vishwamitra himself and how he discovered the Gayatri. He discovered the Gayatri, he didn't invent it, he didn't create it. He didn't sit and think and uh, write about it. He discovered it. So, what's the story? There was this king called Kaushik. And, uh, you see, he, he was a great king, uh, with a huge kingdom, a huge army, and always wanting to conquer more land, more peoples and he wanted to be the emperor, ambitious king. And by God's grace he had everything. He had intelligence, he had physical strength and prowess. Uh, but you know the spiritual culture of that land was such that even kings had to go down to rishis. Uh, when, whenever they went to uh, ashrams and all that, uh, even the administrative heads of kingdoms, the kings had to go down and take instructions from the rishis, uh, the people who practice spiritual discipline and had spiritual awakening. So uh, one day when Kaushik was uh, going home from an expedition with his soldiers, with his army, he came to the hermitage of sage Vashishta, Vashishta Muni, who was a Brahma Jnani, a knower of Brahman. So this is a real story. And he, it seems he came into the hermitage, he bowed down to the Rishi and Vashishta asked him, how is everything in your kingdom? And Vishwa, uh, Kaushik said, well everything is fine by your grace, everything is going well, but I want more kingdom, more uh, uh, land and more power and a bigger uh, empire. And Vashishta said, yes it will happen, don't worry, it's coming in due course. And then um, uh, Vashishta said, please rest a while and let me offer you some food and then you can carry on. And then Vishwa, uh, Kaushik said, uh, no, no, don't trouble yourself because I have so many men with me. Uh, let me go back. And Vashishta insisted, no, no, you must have something at the ashram and then you can go back. 
So it so happened they waited just a few minutes and then they were immediately called for prasad, for lunch, which was elaborate. And they saw so many dishes spread out before them, ten course meal. And how did this happen in so short a time? So Kaushik became very curious and he asked Sage Vashishta, how did you provide with so much in such a short time? And then uh, Sage Vashishta said, uh, my son, I have a cow. And she is not a, just a cow, she is a Devi. She is a divine being. She is Kamathenu, she is Surabhi. Whatever I ask her, she will provide that in, in a matter of seconds. What? Can I see her? Yes, you may see her. So he took her to the divine cow. And as soon as uh, Kaushik's eyes fell on the divine cow, he thought she should belong to me. I am the king of this and the ashram is in my kingdom. Everything in this kingdom belongs to the king. <laughs> that was the you know, way it was in those days. So at once greed came into his mind. The cow should belong to me. Then uh, he told Vashishta, look, I'll give you any price for this. Vashishta said, first you have the food. So then he ate to his fill and the food was like Amrit, so delicious. Something very divine about the whole thing. So then he said, I'll pay you any price for this cow. Take uh, all these gold coins and uh, hundred, hundreds of elephants and all. In those days it was Godhan, no? Uh, cattle and all this were offered. Many things were offered and then Vashishta said, don't make this mistake. She's a divine being, I will not exchange her for anything. And she will not stay in a place where there is no Brahma Vidya. There is no spiritual knowledge. She will not stay in such a place. So don't try to take her away from here. But Kaushik made the mistake. He asked his men to bring the cow to him. And uh, that she was a Kamadhenu. She was not an ordinary being. She, she ran behind. You know, Kamadhenu is that class of cows which were divine. And she was a Surabhi. She was a special uh, divine cow granted to Vashishta by the gods themselves. So she ran behind the sage and pleaded with him, help me, O sage. And then at once Vashishta got enraged, angry. So he lifted up his that Brahmadanda. And at once, you know, all that, that huge army of Kaushik just fell down. All their weapons fell down. And then still Kaushik is ordering them, go and catch the cow. And then he raised his Brahmadanda once again and the whole army perished. The story goes like that. that in no time the entire army perished. And then every Kaushik was stunned. He said, what is this? How can this happen without raising a single weapon? How did he do this? And then he saw that it was the spiritual power of the sage. And then he said, Dhik balam, Kshatriya balam, Brahma teja balam, Eva balam, which means the bal which I have, the strength which I have, it's of an inferior quality. And the strength which the sage has is of a far superior quality. So I will have that strength and then I will conquer this sage and his ashram and get that cow. So he stomped out of the ashram. And he went back to his kingdom. Now only one thing in his head that I have to get spiritual power, the kind of power which the sage has. See, he destroyed my army just like that. And so he gave his kingdom to his son and went to the forest to do tapasya just to gain spiritual power, to gain that cow. See, the initial in intention was very <laughs> small. Like uh, even Dhruva's case was like that. Anything which brings you to Brahma Vidya, you know, it's a blessing. So in his case, it was this silly thing which he, uh, his greed and his ego made him do it. So anyway, he went to the forest, but when he started doing tapasya, his mind became, got decluttered, you know, it became clearer. And he suddenly felt, he felt the joy of meditation. You see, in that kind of mind, do you think greed and anger and ego can persist? You know, gradually all that was leaving him. But it's not that easy, you know, because our mind is a huge something 
the conscious mind is just a strip of your mind and there's a huge subconscious and a vast unconscious and you don't know its contents so from time to time the same arrogance the same ego the same desire will flash into in his mind and trouble him disturb his meditation so then uh, a lot of challenges came into his life and this was his condition first was the challenge of trishanku there was a, a stupid king who you know it, it was a fancy with him he wanted to go to the heavens with his body in his body now nobody is permitted to do that by cosmic law you have to shed the body here and according to your karma you go wherever whether to heaven or hell you can't carry your body to heaven but this king had uh, taken a pledge that no he will go to the heavens with his body and everyone would laugh at him so it's uh, the, the story goes that this trishanku first went to sage vashishta and said i'll give you anything make me go to heaven in this body and the sage just uh, dismissed him and he went to the sage's sons and that uh, when your father is not able to help me can you and they said you idiot if our father says no it means no <laughs> so go back and anyway he he was wandering in the forest wondering what to do and he saw kaushik there sitting luminous with his tapasya and he saw him and said hey you 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 look very bright can you help me with something and then kaushik opened his eyes and said what do you want and he said uh, you know that sage vashishta he insulted me his sons insulted me uh, i want to go to heavens in this body at once kaushik thought vashishta insulted you i'll help you <laughs> you see that's how our ego works so i'll help you come on i'll send you to heaven don't worry in this very body otherwise my name is not kaushik and what will so well the process started you know whatever uh, bal he had gained through, through this tapasya you should remember this every action has an effect when you do tapas you get tapobal you get a different strength and tej through which you can do a lot of things so he had gained some amount of strength this tapasya bal and so he used it on trishanku and sent tried to send him to heaven now this trishanku started going up towards the heavens okay you can imagine how it was and as he was going up suddenly indra appeared there and he said this is not allowed this is against the cosmic law you can't come up with your body so he stopped him there and kaushik said well i am sending him who are you to stop this look at the ego and the arrogance everything coming up and then um, he said you go up. come on go up. and then indra said no he can't go up so trishanku you know midway he was just stuck there that's why it's called trishanku avastha when you are not able to decide which way to go <laughs> so he was hanging upside down there and it seems for a long time he stayed that way because um, kaushik could not help him any further he didn't have enough strength to put him into heaven and nobody can go against the divine law so trishanku had to stay there because of his stupidity and then kaushik understood that i have to continue my tapasya this is not enough this is getting me nowhere and by this time he had exhausted his tapasya fall the fruit of his tapasya so he again started his very high austerity for a long time now if you go to the scriptures they will say 10000 years because they knew the relativity of time so they will put any number of zeros anyway the point is this for a long time he did his uh, tapasya and uh, he gained a lot of power and now he became a rishi but you know the temptations are as you ascend the scale of this ladder of human evolution lots of subtle temptations come into life just to draw you away from that brahma vidya is no joke the knowledge of brahma so now the second problem in his life came in the form of an apsara called menaka so he saw her and he he fell for her he at that moment of time he forgot about his goal of gaining spiritual knowledge brahma vidya brahma tej he forgot all that and he slipped into the householder's life and spent a few years with her 
and she had especially been sent to divert his attention so that he is not able to get uh, all this spiritual uh, because uh, he was not yet fit so uh, many years passed he even had a daughter you know that story that's the st uh, story of shakuntala so after a long time when he lived with menaka menaka was a celestial apsara nymph so one fine day she left him and went back to her indra lok because she was the entertainer there you see <laughs> so um, now he started thinking again are what was i here for i gave up my kingdom and i came to the forest for tapasya and i fell for this woman what did i do so he went back to his tapasya but by that time due to all these experiences he had again exhausted his all his tapasya fall the fruit of his tapasya so again thousands of years of intense tapasya he did finally he felt a luminous glow in his heart his brain became crystal clear his mind got filled with intense awareness he felt something of what is called spiritual awakening he could arrest his thought his emotion at will and he was not carried away by anything anymore and when he was in this stage that arrogance that i want brahma vidya for something left him and in the meantime he found he had wandered close to vashishta's hermitage vashishta's hermitage whom he had sought to challenge and he overheard the conversation between vashishta and arundhati they were uh, vashishta was telling her i have been following the spiritual growth of kaushik you know he is now having that spiritual awakening i am silently helping him with that and once he awakens from within he will lose all his arrogance ignorance everything his desires will leave him and i am helping him towards that as soon as he heard this kaushik was overwhelmed he felt that i sought to challenge this person he is such a great mind he is a realized soul and i didn't even realize that i sought to challenge this for such a petty thing i i fought with him so he entered the hermitage and fell at his feet as soon as his head touched vashishta's feet see the guru's power this is at once the gayatri arose in his heart that tremendous mantra om bhur bhuvasva tat savitur varenyam bhargo devasya dhimahi dhiyo yona prachodaya it reverberated in his consciousness and then and there he had the realization of brahman the complete knowledge of supreme truth the gayatri made it possible and the touch of the guru's feet and then vashishta blessed him saying you are no more an aspirant you are a brahma rishi you are a knower of brahman now and you will be called vishwamitra because you have discovered the gayatri you will give this to the world and that is why you are the real friend of this world vishwasya mitra iti vishwamitra because you will give the gayatri to this world you will initiate people into gayatri you have now got the highest knowledge my son go back to your kingdom so it seems now he became vishwamitra rishi went back and of course he did not go back to rule he went back made his own uh, ashram had his disciples gave them the gayatri and that is how the gayatri descends and comes to us even today it is the most powerful mantra for brahma vidya for the knowledge of brahman because you know the mantra itself is saying o oh, all effulgent one it is a address to savitra the sun god the sun was the highest symbol of brahman in the vedic age it's a prayer to brahman symbolized as the sun to awaken my higher intelligence o oh, though who illumines all the three worlds who who was and swa O Varenyam, the adorable one, please awaken my dhi, awaken my higher intelligence, so that I will have the knowledge of Brahman. I will have the knowledge of supreme truth. 
not just this little little knowledge which helps me survive in this world. That is of course required. After that, this is most required for fulfillment in life. Otherwise, you know, you are only battling with your mind all your life, with the ways of your mind. There will be no awakening to the higher life without this dream. So it's a prayer for that Dhyo Yona Prachodayad. Illumine my understanding, illumine my intelligence and give me this higher knowledge. This is the Gayatri. The very mantra says this. So it's a prayer come mantra. You chant it, it will, it will remove obstacles from your path, you know. We are in Lord Ganesha's temple. Please remember these obstacles which Vishwamitra himself faced. Every human mind faces this. The way to remove it is again the Gayatri. As you chant it, it will remove obstacles. It will clear your mind, declutter your mind. Today in mind management, you are using so many techniques to do that, isn't it? Gayatri is the most powerful and you know, it is a technique reviewed by so many scientists. Just chant the Gayatri, you will get an empty mind. Isn't that fantastic? Tell me. Anything you introduce into that mind will ignite. Because now your mind has become empty of unnecessary thought and fear and worry and it has become full of awareness. That mind, you can do anything with it. It's like a powerful weapon in your hands. You can do anything with such a mind. So the Gayatri brings you into that state. It's a prayer for that. Once he is awakened, do you know what awakens within you? Pragna awakens within you. They are connected. He is that higher intelligence which will fill your heart with awareness. Without awareness, there is no perception, meditation, thought, emotion, nothing. So intense awareness is generated. Medha is awakened. Medha is the power of retention of memory. High power of retention. Whatever you focus on, you will grasp and retain it. You won't forget it. Not just that, there are five such faculties of higher intelligence. They are called Dhi, which is the higher Buddhi, Medha, uh, this uh, Pragna, Pragna is high awareness, then Dhriti, an immovable will. So you don't budge from your goals. You are not that silly that you just go anywhere in life. And Dhriti. Dhriti is this higher will and Smriti which is the higher memory which means the essentials of life are safe with you. Even to a very ripe old age you will have a vibrant memory. You will live a full life and a deep life, a fulfilling life. So this is what the Gayatri actually brings into our lives. But uh, if we take these things lightly, see people who don't practice are not able to understand this. That is why then they say, well how can a mantra, how can words have power like this? You try it and you know, it's something to be done to be known. Because it's a method, I told you. Gayatri is an actual method towards spiritual awakening. If you have Gayatri in your life, you actually don't need anything else. It is the mantra that takes you to the knowledge of Brahman. So you see, we have everything available. The essential thing is the mati to do it, to practice it. So for this to come into our lives is the most important thing. That is why the satsang and coming to temples and worship and whatever you do, it is so that your intelligence is tuned to these things. It, it gets the capacity to dive into spiritual practice and taste all this for yourself because please remember all spiritual experiences first person experience somebody's experience is not going to help me ram krishna paramahams had all those experiences what is that to you or me yes i will worship him definitely it's, it's a divine thing but it should happen to me it should happen in me so these are the methods for that are you getting it See, this is the value of a method, of a means, of a prakriya, we call it in Sanskrit. It means it is the means to that knowledge. Don't think that 
Hinduism has, you just talk about the goal, about Brahman, about the Upanishads, and then there are no ways to go there. It's a, they are good ideas. They are not ideas. They are not ideas. They are experiences with people who have done this practice. You know, because pure consciousness, you can never have an idea of it. Can you have? Tell me. Hmm? If I ask you, tell me the taste of ghee. Can you tell me? Hmm? Anybody? You want to try? <laughs> tell me the taste of clarified butter. <laughs> we haven't invented a word to give us that taste exactly. <laughs> so you can never express it. So also con pure consciousness can never come into your mind, mental expression. You can't find a word for it. You can only be it. You can only experience it. And these are the ways to do that. You cannot know it as you know it, know something, you know. Because knowledge is an objective process. You can be it. When you deepen your awareness, you become fully conscious. And the way to do it is through the Gayatri. So when you practice Gayatri, you know what will happen. The effect of meditation will come into your life. When you meditate, you become intensely aware without a thought process. No thoughts, but intense awareness. How to manufacture this state? Gayatri. How to clear the nonsense in our mind, which is boring us to hell, isn't it, all the time? And giving us so much pain in life. Think about it. We are constantly wanting to empty mind. You see, I work with young people in universities. They also use this language today. I just want to empty my mind. How do you do it? Gayatri. How do you acquire a stable state of mind? Calm all the time. Gayatri. How do I sweeten my emotions so that all this garbled uh, negative emotions don't attack me from time to time? Fear, anger, resentments. That's the poison of life. How do I save myself from that? Gayatri. How do I bring peace into homes, into my home, into my family? Somebody is not agreeing with me constantly. They don't respect me. Use Gayatri. How do I remove obstacles on my path? Even in my job. Because you know that's the path to my spiritual next is the spiritual life. If I don't have a good job, I'm, if I'm not earning well, how will I meditate in the shrine? I won't know what to do. So use the Gayatri. Everything in life is connected. Gayatri is the prayer for the highest spiritual fulfillment, but it will bring everything positive into your life. So don't take it lightly. I'm telling you, we practiced Gayatri for a long time. You know, before sannyas, that's the practice. Actually, it is the practice of Gayatri. And you, you, I can't tell you the state of mind it will produce. It will bring you into the you will taste real life, I can tell you that, because you taste full awareness. Until then you were just, you know, it was the baby life. <laughs> it will appear like that. Only when your mind is fully aware, you, you are vitally alive and you taste life. Am I right? Are these equations true or not? If you are fully aware in mind, you are vitally alive. Your vitality is fully blooming and you taste a huge chunk of life. Gayatri does this for you. <coughs> so don't take it lightly. I want uh, the, the fact that we gathered here and discussed this mantra, I want some amount of practice of Gayatri in you. Don't just hear the talk and then put it on YouTube and it's done. That's not the purpose. See, the, those uh, students whom I teach, they have one of the practicum was practice of Gayatri. And then the experiment was done to watch how their moods have changed, how good they feel within themselves, and the uh, interview with their parents to say if they have changed over uh, those that three months. And uh, 
it showed very positive results. So there is something in all this which is undeniable. You must just practice it to know it. So please do some just 12 times Gayatri for some time and then you can tell the organizers of this talk whether it helped you or not and you will see it will always help you. It will always help you. Bring all felicity to your life. Bring good health. Bring clarity. Bring, bring focus. And remove the unnecessary clutter of worries in your mind. It will remove that. Because many people, you know, they thrive on negativity. They have nothing better to do, no? So keep worrying about something. Otherwise, they don't feel, uh, they feel insecure. If you don't have something to worry about, it doesn't feel good. So all this nonsense will go out, I'm telling you. You will taste real life. So try it out. This is my request to all of you. I think my time is up. It was a one hour talk. But um, I want you to try the Gayatri for some time. Will you do this for me? Yes. If you do that, then the, uh, I will feel fulfilled because uh, we came here only thinking that for me, you know, always the American experience is a learning experience. Not I don't come to teach, but to learn. And wherever I have interacted